everybody, this is Miss Peachy from your WCA Earth Science class. And I'm doing a little video tutorial here for your um, Unit 4 Lesson 7 portfolio in Earth Science B. This is the portfolio on carbon cycle changes. And for this portfolio, you're just going to need to have a single dice, like a die. Or if you don't have one, um, actually there's an online one that you can use that I'm going to show you how to do this. You'll need that and you're going to also need your lab worksheet which is available on my website. So just to remind you, for my website, I'm just going to click on this real quick. And when you go to my website, click on Earth Science B, scroll down, and you'll see the second set of portfolios I'm working on the video for right now has carbon comparing carbon lo loads and this is a Microsoft Word version of this um, lab worksheet because sometimes when you try to use those PDFs they don't save very well and you can't um, recover the information if it doesn't save so you want to make sure you have stuff that's going to save when you open that up that'll bring up this Word version of the worksheet. We're going to go through how to do this. You don't need anything else from the Vega viewer for this. This is all you will need. Um, like I said, you need a dice. So if you can't, if you don't know how, like you don't have a dice of your own, you can use this online dice here. The website is freeonlinedice.com. So if you go to freeonlinedice.com, you can just change this. It automatically gives you the single dice, which is what we want. We want a six-sided dice, and you can just click it to roll it when you need to, and it comes up random just like a regular dice. <clears throat> what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing kind of a, a game of um, statistics in a way to simulate an environment on Earth, both pre-industrial revolution environment and modern-day environment here. And for each one of these, it talks about um, how you're basically going to start off in the air. So you're always at the beginning of every cycle, assume you are in the air. And then you roll the dice to see where you go. Now, who are you? You are a molecule of carbon dioxide. So you're tracing the carbon as it moves through the carbon cycle using this model. So first thing we'll do, we'll go to our roll dice. And we'll roll the dice, and from the air, we get number three. According to this data table, that means I stay. So the first cycle, number one, I'm going to put a little X in this box, indicating that I am still in the air. So I'll roll the dice yet again. And that brings me to number one. Again, I'm in the air, I'm gonna stay in the air because I again have a number one. So <clears throat> let's do this another time. Number four, according to my data table, I will move into a plant now because I've been, I was in the air and now I rolled a four. So my next step is I'm gonna be part of a plant. Okay, and you're gonna continue to do this. Every time you roll, so I roll now, do one more simulation for you. I got a number six. So according to my, I'm in a plant, right? If I roll a six, I go to the soil stores. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Just gotta scroll down. So that's gonna bring me all the way down here. Soil stores. Okay, so you're going to continue to do this and finish up. Um, actually, let me just take you through real quick the end of this cycle because it's important to realize that you're going to start a new cycle here too. My next roll is a number one. So that brings me from the soil stores. I'm going to stay there, it says. Number one means you stay. So I'm going to stay there. And now I'm done with my first cycle. So the, these 
are all part of cycle one. I'll just kind of shade this so you can see I'm talking about. Okay, that's all cycle one. <clears throat> now I'm going to go to the next cycle. And remember, you always start in the air. So now I got to go back. I'm basically doing the exact same thing again. Start in the air, and then you go back up to this as an indicator of where you should go. So we're doing three separate cycles for the pre industrial revolution, three separate cycles for today. When you do today, <clears throat> you're going to use this side. So all of this stuff here, all of just this side of the graph, that's all pre-industrial revolution, right? Today is the other side. So you'll have different, the numbers will correspond to different moves. All right, so once you're done with all of that, you're going to graph your data. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and just um, throw some random stuff in here. Some of the stuff isn't going to make sense, so you don't want to, you know, use it. I'm just randomly picking numbers. So then we add up the columns. One, two, three, four, five in this column. One, two, three, four, five in this column. One, two in this column. One, two in the next column. Nothing in this column and only one in my final column. Okay, so we use those numbers. Then we're gonna do two graphs, one for pre-industrial revolution and one for present day. What you're gonna do for these graphs is you are going to, let's see if I can zoom out on this just a little bit. You're going to put, um, okay, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this something you can see the whole thing of without making it double wide. Okay. You're going to put those identifications at the bottom. So I have air, plants, animals, soil, fossil fuels, and ocean. And then you'll put the number possible of tally marks anywhere from 1 up to 15. And then these, I don't know why I have so many extra. I'm just going to take these guys out. I'm going to highlight them, right click, and get delete columns because you don't need any of that for part of your graph. The only categories you have are air, plants, animals, soil, fossil fuels, and oceans, the only ones you have. So you go up and you get those tally marks, the, the sums. I have five under air. Again, these are fictitious numbers. Don't use them, right? So five under air. I'm going to come here, highlight from one to five, and use my little, my little paint bucket up here, and I'm going to make it a color. I'm making a bar graph here. Also nice, right? There were five, I think, for animals too, or for plants, excuse me, too, right? You can make them different colors if you want. So you just make your bar graph. And you're going to do a bar graph for the pre-industrial revolution and again for today. And again, you can delete the extra columns. You don't need those. Once you're done with the bar graphs, <clears throat> you are now going to answer some questions. Question three says, look at the role go, role go to rules and compare them to the conditions present during each time period. How does the simulation attempt to model real changes in the flux of carbon throughout the cycle from pre-industrial revolution to today? So, I don't know what happened here, guys, but it's supposed to say draw conclusions. Okay, we have to define what it means flux. So flux is basically looking at um, changes in different parts. So we're following the flow of carbon, changes in how carbon flows and how much carbon is in each of the different domains. So you're going to compare the rules here to the rules over here and you know it's going to attempt to model differences in where carbon is stored before the industrial revolution to today so what kind of differences do you know and why do you think those changes were made 
This stuff will be really helpful up here. Those are the main differences in the conditions pre-industrial revolution in modern times. And then um, try to do those think about it questions, okay? According to the results, where was the major flux in the carbon cycle since before the industrial revolution to today? So how does it change? Using this big word flux here, it's actually a little word, but it's a word we're not real familiar with. So where was the major change in the carbon cycle from before the industrial revolution to today? And what caused it? Okay, if you constructed a third simulation for the next 50 years, what changes to the rules would you make and why? So what changes do you suspect to see going forward in 50 more years? What do you predict would happen to the carbon loads within different reservoirs of carbon cycles in the next 50 years in the simulation you created in the previous question? These kind of go together, okay? So what changes would you make to the rules? Why would you make those changes? And where would you really expect to see most of the carbon in the next 60 years? And finally, what human activities could redistribute carbon loads in the carbon cycle so that global warming might slow or decrease? So how do you think people could actually play with the carbon cycle to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? What, what could we do looking at where all the places where carbon is stored, where could we mess with it a little bit to be able to reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much the gist of the whole portfolio. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If you have any questions or you would like me to go over this a bit more with you, go ahead and give me a call at extension 2204 or you can send me a webmail message. Have a great day.